Today, we are talking about the Tribeca Film Festival, and we are excited to bring to you our first guest that will be joining us today. He is a filmmaker from Dublin, Ireland, and it is he. his film, A Better You, is a 2020 Tribeca Film Festival official selection. So, without further ado, I would like to introduce you to Eamon Murphy. And he's coming in three, two, one. There he is. How's it going, Alex? It's good to see you. Thank you for joining us today. No, no, no. Thanks for having me. Oh, yeah. We're, we're excited to, to jump right into it and to talk about uh, what we got going on today. Uh, very exciting stuff. So your film, A Better You, was accepted into the this year's Tribeca Film Festival, correct? Yes, correct. Yeah, yeah. Wonderful. Well, congratulations. We're very excited to, uh, to see that that's what's going on in your life. And we're going to move right into our agenda today. So let's get right into it. Why don't you introduce yourself to, uh, to the folks out there? Yeah, uh, so my name is Eamon Murphy. I'm from Dublin, Ireland. Um, I studied film and broadcasting in the Dublin Institute of Technology. Um, I've been working in film and TV and commercials and things like that uh, for the last five, six years. Um, kind of making my own short films on the side and experimenting with projects. Um, and A Better You is my first short film that's, uh, that's received official funding from Screen Ireland, uh, which is the main funding body here in Ireland. Um, so yeah, we're kind of really excited to be selected for Tribeca this year. Wonderful. Well, I was able to view the film. I thought that it was fantastic. It is a wonderful, heartwarming, romantic drama, I would say, with, with a nice dash of, of comedy here and there. And we have a trailer that we would like to show you. So let's go and check that out. Nope, that is not it. Let us do this. Here we go. some goosebumps because of the music and the melodies that were put into it. Let's uh, let's talk about the concept and the idea that really got you into this. What, um, how did this all start for you? Um, I think it all started, it was, it was kind of strange. It was one of those weird ideas that just came into my head, like fully formed. It wasn't like an idea that I had to keep for a long time like usually you get an idea for a film and then you sit on it for a while and then you eventually try to construct a story uh, but with this one it, it was kind of strange I, I i think it came from a new a number of different things where mainly just seeing things on social media and feeling a little bit alienated every time i saw something on social media like seeing um friends go to parties and stuff like that and saying, oh, they're having a great time and they're living their best life and all this sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. And then I'm sitting at home thinking, why aren't I living my best life? And then then it's like a couple of days later, I went and met up with them as, and I asked, oh, how was the party? And they're like, oh, it was okay. Yeah, you know, it wasn't that great. And then that just kind of started turning cogs in my head. I was like, why are people, you know, they're using Facebook as this means to portray an idyllic self. Okay. Um, to, formulate their own life story in a sense um it's basically like watching someone's highlight reel and cutting out all of the bad stuff <laughs> um so i uh, that was where the idea for better you came from the concept of that idea of putting the social media aspect into a literal metaphor for creating a better idea of yourself so having an act being able to actually buy a better version of yourself mm -hmm. and then the idea of trying to live an alternative life through that. 
Okay. Do you find yourself really uh, close in relationship to your main protagonist in the film? Do you do you feel like you drew a lot from your own personality in order to create this the character in your film? I think so. I think that's going to happen anyway, if because I wrote the film as well. Um, so I think that's a part of myself is always going to be in the film, but. I'm not. A, I'm not an exact representation of Douglas. I mean, Douglas suffer. Uh, you know, the main character Douglas suffers with confidence issues. I think everyone has some sort of confidence issue anyway, and I think it's relatable where everyone feels like they're not enough, and they feel like they need to be better, and they need to try and be other people in order to be accepted by society. Mm -hmm. And I guess I wanted to make a film that sort of encouraged people to just be themselves and to. You know, stop, you know, for me, it was kind of like, as soon as I realized that no one is perfect, the world just opens up to you because you don't have to worry about being perfect then, you know? Um, yeah. And I think that was kind of the idea of Douglas's character. I wanted to tell a story about someone who just really struggled with themselves and felt like they weren't part of society. So they're a bit of an outlier. Sure. Um, you're, the main character that you have in the film is, is an absolutely wonderful actor. How was your, your talent scout uh, in order to find uh, this this actor and and his name and his background and things like that. Yeah, so the guy who plays Douglas is an actor called Shanti O'Malley, who lives in Dublin as well. Um, he, I originally met Sean on the festival circuit about two years before making A Better You. Okay. Um, and I'd seen him in a previous film called Gustav and in a film called Love Is a Sting. Mm -hmm. um, and when it came to auditioning for a film, I just sent him a message on Facebook. I wasn't sure if he'd be right for it, but I figured he had something there that was suitable. So I, I sent him a message on Facebook and I asked him personally, would he come in and audition? And thankfully he said yes. Mm -hmm. And we auditioned probably about 30 to 40 people. And he just stood out amongst everyone else as the guy. You know, as soon as he yeah. started acting, he was able to switch between Douglas and the better Douglas almost instantly, you know? And it was kind of strange how he was able to just channel these two different characters completely. Right, right. well, his his craft really, it, it shows in this film. I think that he was a, a wonderful talent to cast and also have in A Better You. So it's uh, one of the aspects that I really enjoyed. But we can move on to the uh, creative process. Um, the creative process of this film, we were, we were talking with me about how you were writing it and then building it, and then where did you go from there? Did you have other input from from other people? Did you? How did you send it to uh, the main financier, uh, Screen Ireland? Um, how did that work for you? Yeah. So what happened was, as soon as we got the initial funding, um, we went through about three rounds of development with Screen Ireland. Uh, what what initially happened was we initially some applied for funding to Screen Ireland for twenty thousand euros to go and make the film. Uh, and we got to the final five or six people and went to the pitching stage. And the pitch went really well, but what happened was about a week later, we got a phone call saying that they really liked the idea, but they don't think that we can do it for 20,000. So I went online and I submitted it again for the 50,000 and we got shortlisted for that. Uh, went to the pitch, pitched it. Now the pitch the second time around was a lot more rigorous, rigorous and very in-depth in terms of script analysis and how I'm planning to develop the story more. Mm -hmm. And uh, thankfully we got it. And then there was probably about two to three months of me just kind of sitting on it, try tweaking things here and there, really just experimenting um, to see what is the best way to develop it and tell the story the way I wanted it to unfold. Well, that that's a story of perseverance. If at first you don't succeed and you continue pushing, then the magic can can come from that. Um, you were talking about the stages that you had to go through in order to keep moving this along after it was shortlisted. When you were dealing with the representatives at at Screen Ireland, did you have to do a face to face meetings? Did they put in their creative input? Was it all you? How did how did that work um, as it was going along? Yeah, I, um, it, with Screen Ireland, I had about two meetings with them. Uh, with the with their development executive, uh, uh, she was a lovely woman called uh, Emer Markey, and she was uh, very open to my own ideas, while also just giving me feedback. I mean, she she never really pressed ideas onto me as like, oh, you should go do this, you should mm -hmm. go do 
that. It was more so about really just asking questions and asking me what I wanted to tell. And I think by just asking those questions, she really allowed me to think about it more. And she just kind of created a window for me to, to think about it more and think about what's the best way to tell the story. Um, that was kind of the overall process. And then when it came to production, then we had to think about the film differently. So I already went through the idyllic script that I wanted to write. And then how can I actually make this script feasible to deliver as a final project with 50,000? Um, and that, that was a weird challenge in trying to figure out how can I scale it down to fit within that budget. Right, right. Well, that's that's very insightful for people that are looking to see how that process goes when you get to that level. And it's also good to see that you had you retained your creative freedom while while you were making the film and the project. Um, let's let's talk about the team that you that you had with making this uh, the producing team. So what was it like working with the producers that were a part of the project? And um, how did you connect with them? How did you meet with them? And, and what steps did they take to make this a reality? Yeah, so the producer on this film was Quinton O'Hearn. Um, he's a really close friend of mine. Um, I had initially met Quinton about five or six years ago uh, when I was just starting out uh, in film. And he, he runs his own production company in Dublin called uh, Army of Id. Mm -hmm. And they do kind of corporate stuff, commercials and things like that. And I was just working for them as a camera op and just writing and direct, directing my own little stuff on the side. Mm -hmm. And a, me and a friend of mine had written a script called Lost Memories, and we got shortlisted for funding uh, in, for by the Arts Council in Ireland. Uh, we never actually got the funding, but I was telling my friend Quinton about it on the way home from shoot one day, and um, I was saying that we didn't get the funding, and he said, "Oh, well, I'll fund it." And I was like, "Oh, okay." So I sent him the scripts and he's like, yeah, no, I like this idea. Let's let's try and make it. So we went and made it. Cool. And thankfully, uh, thankfully uh, the film did really well on the festival circuit. We picked up a couple of awards. Um, and so then, it all, well, to be honest, it felt only fair to go to Quentin again to say, will you be the producer on this new film? I want to go to Screen Ireland to try and get funding from him. Uh, Thankfully, he said yes, he really liked the idea, and uh, that's kind of how we started working together, really. That's great. That, that, the great relationship between two people working together to make the, the film a reality is, is really, you know, an important uh, concoction to making the film uh, a reality. And uh, here we are with it being accepted to the Tribeca Film Festival, and we're very excited for, for you guys to continue on that journey. Um, we can move to filming in Ireland. So um, I'm broadcasting here from the United States. It's uh, a little bit different than the way things that work in Ireland. How was the process like when you were obtaining your locations? Uh, you see that there's some really big uh, areas that you use, like a library and a dancing hall and uh, a double-decker bus and things like that. How was that experience while you were obtaining all of those things um, for your project? Yeah, it was, it was a tough experience for me trying to develop... Um, trying to find the locations that could take place in an alternative steampunk world. Um, I think f what we done was that we, we contacted um, the locations manager in Screen Ireland who usually take care of international productions who come here. Um, and we got in contact with them and asked, do they know of any sort of locations that would be suitable? And when we got in contact with them. Then we got in contact with location managers who would usually work on feature films. And they had a list of contacts for these locations. And uh, the locations guy, Mix One, was very helpful in securing these um, old style Victorian era locations. So we had the National Library of Ireland and we had a place called Fern Hill in Dunleary, uh, Black Rock area in Dublin. Uh, both of which were really hard to actually get into the film. Like you had to go through rigorous steps and meetings and tell them exactly what we wanted to do. Because some of these are old style buildings. Some of them don't even have the you know, correct amount of power and voltage to actually power, you know, 4K lights and things like that, you know? Wow. So there was uh, a lot of a process that you had to go with obtaining those things. Did you, ha you had a, a location manager that was working on the set or did you have to go in and do it? Uh, and, and do your own meetings and then create the things yourself? Or was that the producers? Like, how, who, who really kind of uh, maintained that or conveyed that? 
Yeah, uh, I'd say Quinton, the producer, and make the locations manager really uh, kind of figured out the nitty gritty details of everything. Mm -hmm. And they were really nice in that they kind of kept me separate from all that stuff of all, you know, things we can and can't do. And they were, uh, you know, just giving me space to just think about the story. So sure. really nice of them. Um, then when it came to the actual days of production, uh, we just had Quinton, the producer on set, managing the caretakers of these buildings and talking to them. Um, like we had done about two to three location scouts with different crew members before we actually showed up on set. So the first day I was just with me and Quinton seeing if this is suitable, do we like it? Then next time around it was getting the art department in, the production designer, DLP, props, gaffer, figuring out where's, where can we plug in to light the set, sure. what we need to dress the set. And thankfully with these locations, they don't require a whole lot of set dressing. Mm -hmm. You know, there's already antique furniture and, you know, it looks the part already. So it's really just adding in the little bits, the little steampunk elements to create that world. Yeah, I was, the aesthetic is definitely very noticeable um, while you're looking at it. it is, it's a futuristic type world. Uh, you're really drawn into it and that it is, uh, it is completely, uh, you just dive into it really. So when I was watching it, I was completely soaked into the world that was created. So I thought that that was uh, a very good job as well it was done. So uh, let's talk about Tribeca Film Festival. So it's uh, right in New York, one of the, the biggest festival in New York, or, or one of the most well-known. Uh, what was your experience in uh, after submitting to Tribeca and then communicating with them? Uh, how, what was that feeling when you found out that you were accepted? Oh, when we found out, uh, I was over the moon. Uh, I mean, Tribeca is one of those film festivals that I think it's a goal that I think every filmmaker aims for, you know, and to actually be accepted in there is just one of the greatest feelings ever, really. Um, so uh, when we got uh, selected, it was, you know, I, it was kind of strange because we couldn't really tell people yet. We, they were like, you're in, but don't announce it just yet. So we were like, oh, I can't tell anyone. Uh, <laughs> so it was a little bit frustrating as well. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I mean, to be selected in, in Tribeca is just amazing. And have, you, have you ever found yourself in New York before? You ever been over to uh, to the States? I've been in New York before, uh, not for film festivals, though, um, unfortunately. But, uh, you know, I've uh, like our, our last film, Lost Memory, screened in a couple of festivals across America, and like Irish Boston Film Festival, Newport Beach, okay. things like that. Um, but, yeah, uh, hopefully uh, we can get over there soon to represent a better year. We, we all we all hope that the, the festival will uh, be able to open and then showcase the films in theaters. Uh, but because of world events currently, uh, we're all kind of adapting and changing things uh, that we can. Um, we know that there will be some uh, activity happening during the time of when the festival was supposed to take place. So we hope to continue our interviews with filmmakers and then showcase the films, trailers, posters, things like that, and then promote films like, like yours to our audiences. So we'll move on to some of your favorite set moments. Do you have a story that uh, happened while you were filming that you would like to share uh, about a better you? Favorite set moments. I think I think probably what, some of my favorite set moments was the scenes where Douglas and the better Douglas are interacting together. That for me was probably some of the toughest filmmaking I've done. Uh, yeah the idea of shooting uh, one actor playing two characters. Mm -hmm. So the, uh, the process was we got in a body double to stand in for the better Douglas and the real Douglas, depending on which way we were shooting. Mm -hmm. And I think for us, it was just a real matter of uh, coordinating it properly, uh, blocking it properly. Mm -hmm. And thankfully, uh, the first AD, Jim Core is his name, was just fantastic in keeping everyone on track in terms of one, what's the best way to shoot this in, term, in terms of keeping on schedule? Mm -hmm. And also for me and the actors trying to keep track of where are we with the characters. So, you know, because obviously the better Douglas starts off as a robot and he yeah. moves robotically and he talks robotically. And as the story progresses, he becomes more human and more like the real Douglas. Yeah. Um, and I think it was... To be honest, it's a testament to Sean, the lead actor, to have the stamina, the stamina and the 
and the energy to maintain that. Yeah. Because you know, normally on set, you know, the actor just says their lines and then they have a little bit of a break when the camera's on the other actor. But for him, he was just always on all the time. And um, he was just fantastic in making that happen. Okay, there I am. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you. That was, well, we almost got through this without one technical difficulty, but that's okay. So uh, let's talk about future filmmaking plans. What uh, plans do you have in the future for uh, continuing making films? Do you want to do shorts? Do you want to move up to narrative features? Are you maybe thinking about documentaries? What do you got? Um, at the moment, I am writing a feature. Um, I was lucky enough to be one of 12 filmmakers selected from across Europe to take part in the Sources 2 program. Uh, which is funded by Creative Media Europe. So basically, I was in Norway back in November or October uh, workshopping a screenplay that I'd written uh, with other filmmakers from around Europe. Um, so I'm in the process of developing that uh, at the moment. So fingers crossed we'll be able to get that into production sometime in the next year or two. Um, and other than that, I'm, I have a couple of other ideas for short films that I'm sitting on at the minute, but nothing that's really jumping out at me as the next big project that I want to tackle. Sure, uh, understandable. Let me uh, let me see if I can get this uh, title. There you are. So, a better you, uh, Eamon Murphy. Is there um, any? And in wrap up, is there anything that you would like to share, like a website that people can go to um, to to check out this film, or a Facebook page, Instagram, things like that? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you can check out all things about A Better You on the Facebook page, Army of It, and on the Instagram page, A Better You Short Film. Um, and Army of It has their own uh, website called www.armyofid.com forward slash A Better You. www.armyofit. Id, ID. Oh, ID. I apologize. Armyofit.com forward slash A Better You. Yes. Okay, so let's get that right up there on the bottom. That is the website, correct? Yes, correct. All right, wonderful. So our audiences can go to that website and check it out. And we would like to thank you for st stopping in and talking with us today. And um, we hope that this film will be able to be screened and showcased to audiences and that other festivals around the world will be able to see it and then bring you right over to their country and showcase it to the audiences. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, yeah. I really hope we do get to go to other festivals soon. Yeah. Okay. yeah, thanks so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Yes, sir. Thank you. Appreciate you being on the show. Thank you. Bye bye. Have a good night. All right. Let me see if I can do this. Is this going to load? <laughs> well, thank you, everybody, for joining us on a the first episode of Breezeway Productions presents The Breeze. It's going to be a new show that we will be doing once we get filmmakers on the line. Uh, talking about their projects that will be screening at the Tribeca Film Festival. Um, we're all very excited to see what movies are going to be coming out. Obviously, you know that there will be an influx of content since a lot of people are sheltering in place and they will be in their homes, and that means that you are always looking for good movies to watch. So again, this is Breezeway Productions presents The Breeze. Thank you so much for joining us today, uh, talking about A Better You by director Eamon Murphy. And thank you so much. Have a wonderful rest of your day.